Today I'm going to show you how to make quaking aspens using only three colors and two brushes. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's your girl Amanda. Welcome to my channel, The Buzzed Artist, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with acrylic paint. For those of you that are new to my channel, I create video painting tutorials every single Wednesday. So if you're new to my channel, please be sure to like my video and to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be able to see more videos from me in the future. Okay, so grab your supplies and let's get painting. Okay, so the things you're gonna need for this painting are an 11 by 14 pre-gessoed canvas, water, a towel for your brushes, and we're gonna be using three colors. So we're gonna be using a titanium white, primary black, and we'll be using a primary yellow. And I'll be using two brushes. So I'm gonna be using a, so I'll be using a number four filbert brush, and I'm gonna be using an angled flat brush. This is an eighth inch. So now that I have all my materials, what I'm gonna start with is actually making the um, background of my tree. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna be taking my filbert and I'm gonna dip it in some water, okay? Now, um, the way I like to do all these is I like to, I like to start out by making the backgrounds first and then we go back in and overlay it with the yellow. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, dip it in yellow, and then I'm gonna add some white to that as well. Just like so. And now that I have my brush all ready to go, I'm just gonna go ahead and start to dab the color onto the canvas. I'm just doing a simple dabbing motion I do want to leave a little bit of, of spaces because we're going to go in with a darker yellow, but I'll show you guys that in the next step. So I'm just going to continue. So I'm just going to continue adding in my color. So this was actually um, recommended by my mother-in-law, Edie, if you're watching this, thank you so much for recommending this to me. Um, she went on a trip to Colorado and saw the Quaking Aspens and she requested that I do a video on how to make Quaking Aspens via painting. So. I've actually never seen Quaking Aspens before. I hear they're gorgeous. Comment below if you've ever actually seen painted uh, Quaking Aspens. And actually comment to me where you're from in, the wor in this part of the world. Um, as you guys know, I'm from the Connecticut area. We don't actually see trees like this. The closest that we see are birches, um, which is another uh, video upcoming video idea that I had um, that I'll be exploring very soon. So I'm just having fun with this, just adding colors, doing my thing. And I do have quite a bit of paint on my brush as I'm doing this because I do need to apply quite a bit in different areas. So I'm just going in and adding in that color. And I can always go back in with just plain yellow without even um, diluting it down with the white and just kind of go over the spot so you add that dimension of color.
So I'm trying to make sure I get pretty good coverage. And the reason why I decided not to go with like a larger brush and just kind of go at it is I, I do want to get the smaller um, looking leaves happening in the back here so I can really accomplish that using my smaller filbert brush. blinding me actually. So another thing I'm going to do to go and juxtapose against the yellow here is add a, that yellow in, but I'm going to add a tinge of black to this. So I'm just going to take my brush, I'm going to add some yellow, I'm going to take the little tiny bit, a little tiny bit of black, like you can, you can barely see it on my brush. I'm just going to add it to my yellow. Then I'm going to add some white. Okay, so it's like the same color that we made here, but it's just slightly like darker tinged. So I'm just going to go back in and just add in using the same dotting technique. But I'm just going to go ahead and add that in to my leaves. Now, because my leaves, um, the paint that I made with them is still wet, this is perfect. It helps create that really nice blend that we're looking for. It helps make this, adds a little bit of realism to it. And I'm always going back and forth with colors. So if I'm kind of done with the color that I put in, you know, the before and I want to add in some more yellow, I just go back in and add that yellow in, okay? So this is this is where you can experiment a little bit with your color. Just really let loose a little bit, just kind of explore. Don't be afraid. And you know what, there's some parts that I'm adding like a globs of, of yellow to this. And I think that is actually a textural thing that I'm trying to go for. I'm loading up my brush. So when I load up my brush, I'm like putting a lot of paint on it. And then I just go ahead and lay it down. And that creates like, it actually lifts the paint off the, the canvas and kind of creates texture to it, um, which I think is super cool. So why not?
even going in with some white because my paint underneath is still wet. I just want to add in another little texture thing going on. Yeah. Just patting it down and letting the paint do the talking for me. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to let this dry and then we're gonna come in and actually make our quaking aspens. Okay, so now that my canvas is nice and dry, what we're going to do next is our quaking aspens. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that filbert brush, I'm going to clean it, make sure it's extra clean, extra well. Um, so, there you go, we're, we're back in action here. Now what I'm going to do is I want to make a, like, a very, 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 very light gray. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take a lot of white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest hint of black. Like, I barely... You guys can see that? I barely have any on my canvas. So, um, I'm just going to mix that in with my white. So, I want to give it the slightest tinge. Um, and when it comes to working with black, it's such a loud color. So you want to make sure you use a little bit at a time until you get the right color you're looking for. I'm pretty happy with this. See how I said it's like very, very, very light. Like you can barely tell that there's black in it. So once we have that going, we're gonna set it down. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to start making our trees. So the way we're gonna make our trees are literally, they're just gonna be fat lines going from the bottom of the canvas, going up. That's it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, I'm still holding it like a pencil, and I'm gonna start down at the corner here. And I'm just gonna take my brush on the broad side and I'm just going to move it up. Move it up, 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 until I get to the top here. Okay? Now, all, I, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to just add a bit more so I can thicken this up. And again, I'm just gonna go back in and add in some color, add in some more color on my brush, so I can go ahead and do that. Okay? So that's that's pretty much that's pretty much what our quaking aspen's gonna be. It's just like, we're just gonna make the background colors first. And then once we have the background colors, we're gonna let those dry, and then we're gonna add in those uh, characteristic black markings that it has. Okay, so I'm actually gonna make mine about like an inch and a half to two inches thick. So I'm just going to, I think I'm good with that, with that um, thickness. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make another, another tree. So I'm just going to go next to this one. And I'm just gonna do another straight line going up. And then I'm just going to thicken that up. And again, um, if you're feeling like you want to make these tree trunks even thicker than I'm doing it or even thinner than I'm doing it, this is your call. You can do whatever you like. You're just here for the inspiration to get that creativity flow going. Okay. And you'll notice that um, some of the trees that I have here, some are like a little lighter and a little darker, and that's totally cool. I actually like that effect a lot. It does create um, very cool looking trees, can give you that realism, that realism look. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue adding some more trees. So I, I think I'm done with this one. I'm gonna do probably one more right here. It's kind of close to this other, the other tree we laid down. 
Now this particular stripe, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, gravitating more towards like pure white on my brush. Besides, um, you know, I, I'm not really adding in the black anymore. I kind of want to create that contrast. So I'm just going in and adding it, kind of conjoining them at the bottoms here. And then I kind of bring them straight up just like so. Okay. So you can, you can already see, you can already see, you know, it's like it's like two trees, one tree kind of split off into two on the top there. Okay. Now let's do another, another set of trees. I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a little space in between those two trees there. I'm going to put another one here. And again, I'm just, I'm just working with my brush, kind of adding in as I go. Hmm, that's a dark color. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, when it comes, when you find that that color that you put down is way too dark, add white. White is your savior. And I'm also tipping my brush to the side, just like so, so I can get the I can get those lines. So. It's a little tough when you're, um, you know, using using like a like a filbert like like this. But I usually like to tip it on its side, and that helps me kind of get the the edges and help it make it crisp. Now this, this tree I think is just a little too dark for my taste, so I'm just going in with just white and kind of going over it and just spreading off that paint. Don't worry if it's a little globby. That's actually a nice, that's a nice touch. It's, it creates that sense of uh, texture to your tree trunk. Okay, awesome. All right, and I'm just going to rinse and repeat and add a couple more to my liking. Also another tip, if you find that you're struggling to carry your paint and you know to pull it on your canvas, just add a little water to your brush and that actually will do the trick for you. Acrylics are really great when you put them with water. Um, it helps to helps to like break up the paint consistency and helps to uh, be draggable onto your canvas. So that's that's an added advantage for you. Okay. And I'm going to add another tree. I think, uh, let's see here, what do I want to do? Hmm. You know what, maybe I'll just add another tree like here in the, in the middle of these two bunches. And I'm not going to make this one as thick, but I do want to... I'm just not going to make it as thick, I'm just going to go ahead and add in that color. like so. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, and I'm gonna go probably add another couple of trees right here, and I think we'll call it done for our for our quaking aspens.
Now, if you want to add a little bit of like um, a depth to your trees, one thing you can do, and like let's say you didn't want to really go completely with the, um, like a, you want to do, you don't want to add like a little bit of that black in there. All you could do is just make that, make your lines, make your, your tree trunks with just pure white. And then once you're done, you can go back in, add a touch of black, mix it in with your white, and then with your brush very gently, just go over. Um, I, I'm choosing like an edge on the, on the trunk of the tree and just adding in that touch of color. I don't wanna to do too much, I just wanna do just a little bit to add just to add a little bit of depth. So I'm just, I'm adding it, I'm consistently adding it to the right side of the tree. This is, this is if you choose to do that, um, totally up to you. And all my, all my aspens, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm trying to like add a little bit more of an interesting like angle to the tree. So I don't want them to just be all straight up straight lines, <laughs> straight up straight lines. Um, I'm kind of like making some lean out. So, you know, some start like right here and then they kind of bow out and then move up. So I'm just going to make sure that uh, there's a substantial trunk here so that as it moves up. It, can steady itself. So I'm I'm just I'm playing around with the angles, just having a good time with it. I'm not necessarily constricting myself to using just straight lines, okay? So keep that in mind. You can you can experiment with this, you can go and take this in different directions of, of your choosing really. And you know what? While we're at it, I'm gonna probably make another little line of aspens here. So I'm just gonna take my brush, use a tip very lightly. Just make a line going down. And I'm gonna add another one too, and I'm, this one I'm going to just, just put like right here next to it. Again, I'm just using the, uh, the tip of my brush to create that line. If you're not comfortable using this kind of brush, what you can do is go with a smaller brush. So if you wanna go with a smaller brush, all you gotta do is just dip it in some water, get it wet, dip it in your white um, or your very light gray and just go ahead and fill in that color with the, with the detail brush, okay? So this is completely up to you and your style preference. You can even use this brush to clean up the edges of your of your tree trunks here. Okay. When it comes to using detail brushes, these are super precise. So they are great for um, getting the details. You know, if you want to get extra leaves, if you wanted to get like a nice clean line of separation with your with your trunks, the this is the this is the brush to do it with. I'll do another one like in the like in the middle of the trees that I made so like so that it looks like that there's a lot more than what you're really seeing in this picture so I'm probably gonna add like another one here and maybe another one like right here a little thicker. Once again, 
you don't have to do as many trees as I'm doing. I kind of like having that abundance of trees. That I like, I like having that effect. Okay. Okay, so I'm pretty good with what I see here. I'm gonna let this white part dry and then I'm gonna go back in and add in the those characteristic black markings of our aspens. So now we're gonna move on to those characteristic markings on the aspens. I'm gonna be using the small detail angle brush here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna soak it up in a little bit of water, get it nice and wet, and I'm just gonna dip my brush in some black, just like so, okay? And once I have that, I'm gonna start to make those markings. So now, one of the characteristic markings of those aspens is it, it's kind of like the top of an eyeball um, is the best way I can describe it. And I'll just show you what I mean. So with your brush, you're just gonna go ahead and make this a little dot. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just make a line going down on the top of the dot. And then you're gonna repeat the same on the other side, just like so. Okay, so that is one of the characteristic looking markings on your Aspen. And it looks like the top, it looks like a comic book, like eyeball. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat um, those markings. There, there's some markings that look like this, but there's others that are kind of like, kind of like a, a dot, um, which is a little bit of a, a character to it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make like little markings here and there. And that like eyeball kind of um, marking is pretty prevalent along these trees. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in those. So I'm just gonna make another line. So I'm kind of just going in and making like little lines and dots. Kind of similar to like what you would imagine like a birch tree. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just gonna go have fun with it. So I'm just adding some lines. Wherever I'm adding lines, I'm kind of like, when I want to do skinnier lines, I just very lightly um, skim my brush over that I'm looking for, okay? And that's pretty much the, uh, that's pretty much the marking of your Aspen. So we're just gonna keep going, we're gonna keep adding in our characteristic Aspen color. So the ones that are in the background, like the really tiny ones, I'm just, I'm not gonna bother doing like the super detail colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and add like little black dots. Okay. Not, I don't wanna do too many, but just, just enough. Okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just like so. And same thing over here. This has a pretty like abstract look to it, which I, this is actually why I fell in love with these trees. Like they do have this unique look here. I'm gonna do like a little circle here. And if you're ever wondering like, you know, how do I make these markings? Like I, I'm literally just looking at a sample picture of, a, of an aspen tree and kind of just like imitating the markings on it. Um, that's really the simplest way I can, I can I guess demonstrate that to you would be just to, you know, kind of go crazy with it, have fun with making these um, tree markings, you know, just take it from actual real life examples and just use that as inspiration as like your canvas in a way.
I don't know why, but I'm getting the vibe of like 101 Dalmatians with this. Yeah, I'm just kind of going in, adding in some, some lines wherever I see fit. Now, there are some things that I did notice about the Quaking Aspens in that it has some black um, branches coming out of it. So once again, with our, with our brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in just a couple black branches here and there. I'm not, I'm not gonna make them too big, but um, whenever it comes to making a branch, always think about the making the letter Y with every branch that you make, okay? So just to give you another example, let's see here. Okay, and I'm just gonna help, I'm just gonna make the letter Y. See that letter Y that just formed there? Okay, okay. You know what, maybe I'll do, I'll probably do one on this side actually. Just very carefully laying it down. Okay. Slowly but surely. Okay. So I'm just kind of feeling it out, um, thinking about where I want to put the next one. And uh, let's see here. I think, I think I might want to put like a branch or some sort. Yeah, you know what, let's do that. So I'm gonna make like a little like a little um, set of twigs coming out. Um, this could indicate that there's an aspen kind of hidden out on the canvas this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my small brush and again, I'm gonna start at the bottom this time and make that branch. And I'm just gonna make a branch going up like this. Another branch going up like this. And another one coming up like that. When it comes to branches, Especially when you're making like multiple looking, multiple branches, the more like spindly things you have there and they're nice and thin, the better. So I'm just making sure to keep my brush wet. Spindly looking tree branches. All right, and again, remember the letter Y. I'm just making the letter Y with my branches, okay? You can, you can elaborate on this. If you wanna make these even more, you know, spindly, Go for it. This is totally your time to figure that part out. Okay. Maybe I'll do another like branch coming out this way. And I'm like interspersing them just like so. Because why not? This is your painting. You can do whatever you wish. You know, I'm gonna probably do another one coming out this way. Okay. And I'll probably I'll do another like set of branches out here because I'm feeling creative. Let's 
See how cool that is? Very easy, very simple. Once you kind of know the basics, you can kind of like play around and take it from there. And uh, let's see, do I want to add another set of... Okay, awesome. So I think, I think I'm pretty good with this. So I'm going to wait until this part dries. We're going to do the last finishing touches and then we'll be done with our painting. Okay, last but not least, we're going to be adding in a couple more uh, defining leaves that are going to be just on these little branches that we made here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my filbert. I'm going to uh, get him wet, make sure he's clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that same background color that we did before. So I'm just going to take some yellow, add a little bit of white. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is with the tip of my brush this time, I'm just going to go ahead and add in some of the leaves back in here. Okay. Now what's cool about this is that it's just adding in, it's adding in perception, right? So what you're doing when you're adding in this color back in, you're showing that this bush here is actually in front of these trees, okay? And that that's just a simple trick of the eye, really. Nothing, nothing like too magical about it, honestly. It's just uh, where you decide to put um, your paint, really. Okay. And if you want, you can always add a little bit to the tops of the, the branches where we made them before. So I'm just going to go and add that in. So you got some that are kind of like hiding those trees in the back. Okay, not too crazy, just a little. Just a little bit here and there. So I do want to add one more thing. So everything just seems to be blending in with the background here. So I do want to add a little bit of a, a pop. Okay, so I'm going to take my small brush, fill it up with black, and very carefully what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a a uh, black outline to my trunks, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and where I ended my trunk, I'm just going to add in the black line, okay? Now, I'm going very, very lightly. I don't want this to be too pronounced, but I'm barely touching, I'm barely, barely touching the canvas with my brush, so this is a really great way to add in like those, those very detailed looking lines and I'm not really like doing um, a full line going down I'm just kind of adding in like lines that help to break up the um, I kind of like create that sharp edge that I was looking for and you know what I'm actually in love with this 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 is actually starting to look like a, I don't know why it's got this it's got this like almost like very modern look to it, like a, like a modern art art piece in a way. Um, but I'm actually I'm really loving this, so I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna follow it down. And again, I'm not connecting the lines. I don't want to. I'm very lightly, very carefully. And what's kind of cool about this part is that I can I'm not sure what I was going to say there. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, that's what I was gonna say. You don't necessarily have to like stick to where your your um, white ends. Like if you find that like, there's a little bit of yellow that kind of seeped through, you can totally just paint over it. It's like it's almost like an impressionist's forgiveness in a way. Um, it's just like it's so there's so much abstractness that you know keeping it within the lines is just like you don't really need to do that, which makes this also all the more beautiful. If you want, you can always go to a Sharpie and do this part, but because I have a brush of, of this size and it's got a very firm um, bristle, I'm able to do this actually very, very easily. Yeah, I, I'm really in love with this. So I'm just flipping it over so I can get a better angle. And once again, if your paint is having trouble carrying, I just add a little bit of water and that will do just enough to create that, that flow you're looking for with your paint.
Okay, so this is the basis of how you make your Quaking Aspens. I'm really liking how this came out. I think I might um, just fiddle around with this a little bit more, but for the most part, this is how you make them. Congratulations on making your own Quaking Aspen painting. If you guys want to come and show me a little extra love, as well as receive exclusive bonus material on what goes into the painting process, suggesting future topics for my videos, etc. Please be sure to check out my Patreon page. I have it in the description below and you can check that out. And once again, be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be able to see more painting tutorials from me in the future. I upload videos every week on Wednesday, so please be sure to check back again next week for our next painting that we have coming up in the queue. Once again, my name is Amanda Thank you so much for coming to visit my channel, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Pew pew!